Tisch School of the Arts. Liberal Studies. And now, please rise for the national anthem led by Bern Time, who received a Master of Music degree from the Steinhardt School of Culture, Education, and Human Development in 2020. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight all oh, the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare Bursting in air Gave proof through the night That our flag was still there Oh, say does that star-spangled Banner yet wave O'er the land from Amy Gunn, who received the Bachelor of Science from the Leonard N. Stern School of Business in 2020, and who will now address her fellow alumni. Hello, class of 2020. And class of 2021, we're glad you're here too. To all of us, I left an imaginary toast goblet to say congratulations on officially graduating again. Today, we all chose to consciously hit pause on our now adult lives to take a look back. And because this isn't a normal commencement, and because these past two years haven't been normal years, I'm sure I'm the first one who's told you that, I'll forego the usual let's go change the world speech and instead ask us all to spend the next few minutes on the past. If I asked you to recall one memory at NYU that'll last you for a lifetime, I'm sure you'd have one. In fact, not just one, but dozens and hundreds that made you want to come back here and celebrate today. I know that I've been thinking about this particular moment for a long time now, because for me, to be standing here is nothing short of a miracle. In 2017, after my fall semester in Prague, I was diagnosed with an eating disorder and told I was lucky to be alive. I was extremely underweight, had a shrunken heart, and was this close to having a heart attack and my life. I was pulled out of NYU in the spring, 
and I spent it at home alone, recovering my weight, and more importantly, my sense of self. What did it mean to be alive? To live a life truly worth living. And when I returned, I felt acutely aware that I was lucky to be able to do the smallest things, like walk in the city, see a friend, even go to class. I knew I had been granted a second chance at life, so damn it, I was gonna make it worthwhile. And then, thank you. And then COVID hit, and we all went home again, and we all graduated remotely in front of our computer screens. And then it wasn't just me, but all of us who had to think about or rethink what we really wanted out of life. In my case, I moved to Taiwan, I went to go teach English under a Fulbright scholarship, and everything, everything was really good for a couple of months. And then last April, I almost lost my life for the second time in a freak train accident. Two of my friends, including my roommate at the time, were not as lucky. Now, I'm telling this story not to evoke pity or to make you sad, I promise. I'm telling it because I bet every single one of us sitting here or standing here has experienced loss or grief or sacrifice in some way over the last few years. And in spite of it all, we are here today with our friends and family, and we are very much alive. And if that isn't the definition of resilience, I don't know what is. And though we've lost much, we've also gained much. We've gained perspective. We've gained patience for our others and also for ourselves. And we've gained a collective sense of how precious life really is. Near-death experience or not, we've all had to grapple with the meaning of life these past few years. And at the wise old age of 23, I think I found the answer. For me, the meaning of life is twofold. One, it's about enjoying the passage of time. It's about looking forward, yes, but it's also about looking back, like we are today, and just appreciate every single beautiful moment that we've been able to collect in this short amount of time we call One Life. And the second part is recognizing just how short life can be. If nothing else, COVID taught us this. So, class of 2020, if there's just one thing you take away from this speech today, it's that you matter. Your life matters. Your time matters. And because our time here as a family, as a human group, <laughs> we owe it to ourselves to take advantage of every single moment. Thank you and congratulations again. Please welcome Pia Radhakrishna, who received the Bachelor of Arts from Liberal Studies in 2021, and who will now address her fellow alumni. Hello, classes of 2020 and 2021. Can you believe that we are experiencing this once-in-a-lifetime moment of graduation a second time around? What a privilege it is to physically share this space and time with you. But you know what? This past year, on every video call home, I have seen hope in my mother's eyes as she's watched me gain a deeper, broader understanding of the world. Classes of 2020 and 2021, we've been resilient in overcoming the challenges of life after graduation together. 
our presence here today together is a testament to our collective ability to cultivate joy in a world full of uncertainties. And right now, our singular paths and diverse perspectives converge in this moment of shared hope. We have carried these qualities into the postgraduate, post-COVID real world as we learn to create the world we really want to live in. It's been a pleasure to grow with you as we graduate from NYU twice with resilience, joy, and hope. Thank you and congratulations. Good evening, graduates of 2020 and 2021. It's such an honor to be able to introduce Judith Human. She is an internationally respected disability rights activist and a policymaker. Judith, you have been challenging the unequal treatment of disabled people throughout your life. You are carrying on the vision of your unstoppable parents, Ilsa and Werner Human. May their memories be a blessing. Among your trailblazing accomplishments, you were the first wheelchair user to teach at a public school in New York City. There's a long list. The first director of the Department of Disability Services in the District of Columbia. The first advisor to the World Bank on Disability and Development. You are an amazing and unrepentant badass, and I'm not the first person to tell you that. You have organized countless protests and sit-ins in your fight for disability rights, one of which successfully pressured the Carter administration to implement protections for disabled people and ignited a national disability rights movement that eventually led to the passage of the Americans with Disabilities Act in 1990, which has transformed all our lives. You also, as if that weren't enough, worked with the US Congress to develop legislation that would eventually become the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act from which all of you have profited. You serve in the U.S. Department of Education under President Clinton and in the U.S. Department of State under President Obama. Your reach and influence in shaping international disability rights and justice is unparalleled. Thank you, Judith, and congratulations. Judith Human, your accomplishments exemplify what one person can do to galvanize communities, launch a multifaceted movement, it embed its values in legislation, and energize democracy in action. By virtue of the authority vested in me, 
I am pleased to confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, Honoris Causa. I am now delighted to introduce Judith Human, who will respond on behalf of the honorary degree recipients this evening. It's a huge honor for me to return from New York to New York to, New York, to be with all of you this evening and to share this stage with such luminaries, such impressive and accomplished honorees as Lonnie Bunch and Jill Lepore. I understand there were some other honorees here for the class of 2022 earlier today. And that, that ceremony was a particularly hot ticket. Anybody here? Try to sneak in? I was tempted to. <laughs> Believe it or not, Taylor Swift and I keep ending up at the same events, but never quite at the same time. I swear, the same thing happened at the Sundance Film Festival in 2020. Anyone who can write lyrics like I could build a castle out of all the bricks they threw at me is definitely someone I would like to meet. Now, I've led protests that have closed down traffic on Madison Avenue. I've led peaceful sit-ins of federal buildings. I've testified before Congress on more than a few occasions. And I've even been the subject of a Comedy Central drunk history story. I have to confess, though, that nothing made me quite so apprehensive as the prospect of preparing remarks for your graduating classes. Why? Well, usually graduating classes are filled with people who have just finished their degrees, who are on the precipice of heading out into the world, and in many, though not all cases, are individuals who have yet to experience a major challenge or disruption in their lives. You completed your studies one, two years ago. You're already out working, pursuing further degrees, or otherwise moving on with your lives. And as of disruption, if the last two years don't count as life altering, I'm not sure what does. I've lived through a lot of upheaval in my life, but even for me, the last two years have been singularly remarkable. Back in early 2020, I was so excited at all the opportunities that were coming up. I was promoting my new book, Being Human, and participating in film festivals to support the documentary film, Crip Camp, which would later be nominated for an Oscar. 
It never occurred to me that all the events coming up on my calendar wouldn't just go ahead as planned. I still remember appearing on The Daily Show with Trevor Noah, and then just days later, bam. It was as though someone had slammed on the brakes for the entire world and everything was different. Anyone who knows me will tell you that I am a capital E for extrovert. I love meeting people and being out and about, being part of the hustle and bustle of the world. You can take the girl out of Brooklyn, but you can't take Brooklyn out of the girl. I do not like to sit still. I can't presume to know how it was for you to have this happen in the middle of your school year. But for me, suddenly, the world felt much smaller and a lot quieter. And then came what we in the disability community feared. Disabled people dying because our lives were considered less worthy of treatment. Deaf people being hospitalized with no access to sign language interpreters to understand what was happening or to meaningfully participate in decision-making about their care. People losing access to personal assistance services they needed to be able to live independently and avoid ending up in institutions. Over 200,000 residents and staff in long-term care facilities died of COVID, which accounts for more than 23% of all COVID deaths in the US. And many were unable to see their families even at the end of life. At times like that, it can be easy to feel overwhelmed, to feel powerless to change things, or to just give up and take it for granted that nothing can be done. But the disability community knew better. We're used to people telling us there are no solutions and then creating our own. So we did what we do best. We reached out to each other and to our allies, and we mobilized across communities to make change, to benefit and include everyone in society. We demanded that the civil rights laws we fought so hard for be enforced in healthcare facilities, workplaces, transportation, schools, and elsewhere. We form networks of support to keep each other connected and nourished in body and mind. And we smiled as society at large suddenly discovered online video conferencing technologies and workplace flexibilities that disabled people had been at the forefront of developing and advocating for long before the rest of the world realized they could be part of the new normal. And we embraced the ever-widening diversity of our community and the strength that we know comes with that. The disability community is one that anyone can join at any time. So our identities are naturally intertwined with all other groups in society around the world. And with more people self-identifying as having a disability because of long COVID and society's increased interest in discussing mental health because of the impacts of the last two years, I am hopeful that yet more people will feel empowered 
to embrace their disability identity and that everyone will finally realize disability is different. It is not deficiency. You've probably heard the Dr. Martin Luther King quote, that injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. What is less often quoted is what he said next. We are caught in an inescapable network of mutuality, tied in a single garment of destiny. Whatever affects one directly affects all indirectly. If we haven't learned that after the last two years, I'm not sure what it will take to get people to recognize the truth of those words. We simply can no longer take it for granted that what affects others, for better or worse, and wherever they are in the world, won't also impact us all. The last few years have been hard, and at times heartbroken. No question about it. But like the finest of swords, or chocolates if you prefer, the tempering you've experienced in the forge of the pandemic has made you stronger, even when you might not always feel that way. That's why I am so excited about the world you are going to rebuild and are already shaping with your creativity, your power, and your diverse voices. Now and in the coming years, there are myriad issues that will require us to come together across diverse communities if we are to meet those challenges. Whether it is global climate change, promoting biodiversity, protecting democracy, preserving our reproductive rights, creating communities that are more resilient, equitable, and inclusive, or simply supporting each other as we muddle our way through the daily challenges of life. Please know, and I know you believe, that you are up to those challenges. To the NYU classes of 20 and 21, Congratulations. I wish you strength and good fortune as you move forward with your lives. And remember, never take for granted that you too have your part to play in weaving the strands of that single garment of destiny. Thank you. Please welcome the Tisch Singers with a tribute to New York City and the class of 2020 and the class of 2021. Part of it, New York, New York. These vagabond shoes are longing to stray and step around the heart of it, New York, New York. Find I'm king 
in the world, New York City, and a warm, and a warm welcome to all of you tuning in virtually, but especially welcome to our class of 2020 graduates, and welcome to our class of 2021 graduates. Now, now, in a commencement speech, it's customary for a university's president to set the tone before students go out into the world and continue their new lives. But being as you've already been out on your own for at least a year or two, the tables are somewhat turned today. I would venture to guess that we have a lot to learn from you. First and foremost, we have learned from you how to adapt and change when faced with difficulty. We have learned from you how to focus our minds and hone our intellects by watching you remain engaged in your scholarship and research in spite of a global pandemic. We have learned from you how to forge meaningful connections with one another amid quarantines and separation. We learn from you how to be generous when you held PPE drives for one another. We learn from you how to fight for change when you demanded social justice, a more equitable future, and a more sustainable world. And we learn from you how to help one another and stand up for your neighbor when you lent a hand to fellow classmates who needed support or who needed an ally. We learn from you, classes of 2020 and 2021, how to think outside of our circles when you volunteered to help people in the cities in which our campuses are located, whether it was to provide health care for the young or companionship for the elderly. 
we learned from you how to remain flexible and to pivot when faced with obstacles or unexpected challenges. And now that you've graduated from NYU, we learned from you how to navigate new lives at times still limited by pandemic. Now, I'd just like this evening to share a few paths that you and your classmates have chosen. They are many, they are varied, and they are magnificent. Some of you are first responders. Others are teachers. Some of you are management consultants, journalists, or producers, artists, or writers. Some of you are helping drive technology companies in Silicon Valley. One of you, one of you is even an engineer for Lego. I want to meet that person. And of course, some of you are continuing your studies or starting businesses or working in fashion or in sports. But some of you are still figuring out what your dream jobs are going to be. Or you're rethinking your lives and the directions that you want to follow. Some of you may take some time to find your purpose, and that is okay. In many ways, we are in a time of reckoning of taking stock of the world around us and what we value. For many of you, your time at NYU was during a politically fractious era. And we meet here at Yankee Stadium when, though the world is now opening up, world peace is under threat. In spite of the unease, we saw you, graduates of 20 and 21, we saw you challenge your thinking and explore new perspectives. And these are values we've already seen you take into your new lives. Your experience at NYU has prepared you for whatever comes next. I know that wherever your journey takes you, you will do so with an open mind, a generous heart, and a sense of community. I know this from what we have already learned from you. There is, quite frankly, little wisdom that I can impart to the classes of 2020 and 2021, who have displayed such a maturity beyond your years, navigating your time at NYU and your new lives with such grace, with such aplomb. Today, I am brimming with violent pride. I am proud of you, each and every one of you, and you should be proud of yourselves. To the parents and loved ones here today, thank you for entrusting us with your children's education. And class of 2020, class of 2021, thank you for coming back and joining us today. Thank you for everything that you have taught us. Let us never forget what we have been through together. Come back to see us often, classes of 20 and 21. And from everyone at NYU, our warmest congratulations to you all and our very, very best wishes for the future years ahead. Thank you all and congratulations. And now a message to the graduates from our alumni. Congratulations, graduates. Today is your day. I'm Dasha Ratu, a graduate of the Gallatin School of Individualized Study, class of 2014. 
an NYU alumni trustee, and president of your alumni association. Today you join over 600,000 NYU alumni around the world. We are ready to support your next journey and look forward to connecting with you through upcoming events and programs. And now, here are just a few alumni who want to wish you congratulations on your special day. Congratulations, graduates! You did it! Now the real adventure begins. So go out into the world and be yourself. Please don't try to be anybody else but you. Congratulations, graduates. You have not been chopped. You have made it. And the brilliant education that you've experienced at New York University is now yours to go forth and share with the world, along with those terrific manners you learned from New York City. Congratulations to the graduating class of NYU. Today is your big day, and it's the next step into such a bright future. Don't forget us back at NYU. We love you, we send you love, and I hope that you take all of the wisdom, the strength, the talent, and the joy that you had here and inspire us in the real world. NYU grads, congratulations. congratulations. Do great things with your education. Change the world. We'll see you on Mars. It is my honor to be able to share this anointing with the eminent graduates of New York University. Ubuntu. Ubuntu means I am because you are. Congratulations. Thank you for allowing me to share this blessing. Graduates, you have worked so hard to get to this moment. But this is just the beginning of your big life on your own terms. Let go of all the shoulds. Let go of everyone else's ideas of what you should do with your life and what should matter to you because this is your life and it's going to be big. I spent a good part of my life trying to help people get places, but I have done nothing compared to what NYU has done to prepare you to go wherever you want in the world. You are ready to make an impact. Good luck and congratulations. Congratulations, all of you students and your parents sitting here today. I've been both at NYU. As a student, I couldn't have been more proud then and today that I earned my degree from this amazing university. And as a parent, I remember sitting at graduation, just like all of you today, watching my child graduate and thinking the same thing. Thank God I don't have to pay for college anymore. And to you students, the door is open for all of you. The future is yours. We're waiting for you. Allison Green, Dean of the Tisch School of the Arts. Mr. President, I have the joy of presenting the graduates of the Tisch School of the Arts. I would like to present, I would like to present Oriana who will receive a symbolic diploma of the class of 2020, and Samuel Taylor Augustine, who will receive a symbolic diploma on behalf of the class of 2021. Julie Mosto, Dean of Liberal Studies. Mr. President, I have the honor of presenting the graduates in Global Liberal Studies. I would like to present Tamara Moctezuma, who receive a symbolic diploma on behalf of the classes of 2020 and 2021.
alumni from the classes of 2020 and 2021 through your successful efforts as certified by the recommendations of your deans. You have received this hallmark of New York University. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the trustees, I admitted you to the degrees and certificates for which you were recommended and approved in previous years. Congratulations, NYU graduates. <laughs> graduates, you have already joined the ranks of NYU alumni and have started sharing your knowledge and using your talents to benefit humanity. Continue this tradition that reaches back to 1831, embodying the words of our motto, per stare et praestare, persevere and excel. Congratulations to each and every one of you. Well done.